by flipping out that, you skit. You're lucky you didn't snap your shins. Dejan, that's that's your child. He what are you even crying for? Get up, be a man. That's because he's six. He's a six-year-old child. <laughs> Well, hello there all, and welcome to the critically acclaimed FTW, or as it's known these days, just TW. This is the series where I bring to you the best and more frequently the worst of what football has to offer online and on social media during the course of the week. But unfortunately, we're still living in a world without football, and quite frankly, I'm hating it. Everyone else seems bored as well. I've even been informed that people have made a Reddit for this channel. There'll be a link down in the description below. Go and post on it, and I'll do a reaction video to it. It's a chance to get in one of my videos for bullying me, basically, so go ahead and do it. Footballers, I'm sure, are struggling as well, having to refrain from stupidity like Kyle Walker and Jack Grealish. I don't have much hope for them. In fact, I give it about 10 minutes before one of them. Tottenham, Serge Aurier and Musa Sissoko, sorry for flouting government advice by training together. I didn't even get to finish the sentence. If you look closely in the background, you can see Tangi and Dombele getting involved in the training drills as well. Look, I wouldn't even mind if they were trying to get some actual defensive ability into Serge Aurier, but they were doing physical training. He doesn't need that. He's already built like a man who looks like his dad is the actual Burj Khalifa. But arguably the biggest English-based story for this week involves this man. And ironically, he's being kicked directly out of the sport. It's no real surprise. Fan support of this guy is about as high as his daily vegetable intake. There's only one thing rising exponentially at this club, and that's its owner's cholesterol levels. For the 23rd year in a row, Newcastle United could be taken over by foreign investors. Will this mean no more Mike Ashley? Probably not. This happens literally every single time. Does anyone remember that guy who was yeeting his meat around inside the stadium a few months ago? He saw this coming. He was just celebrating the takeover in advance. Get him back in the stadium. Let him helicopter to his heart's content. To be fair, if this deal goes through, I can imagine every single member of Newcastle will literally be out of their houses, whipping their sausages out and swirling them about in the street. Just another episode of Geordie Shaw, really. Middle Eastern billionaires are trying to take over the club, and when I tell you they're rich, they have a higher net worth than the Manchester City owners, and 18 of the other owners in the Premier League combined. And obviously, with this money has come rumours of absolutely mad signings coming in future transfer windows. Lionel Messi and Cristiano Ronaldo scranning sausage rolls from Greggs in Newcastle could genuinely end up happening. An edit was posted this week of what the Newcastle team could end up looking like. Current Newcastle left back Jetro Willem seemed a little bit concerned about his place in the starting 11. Now I'm genuinely creasing at the idea that Steve Bruce could be managing some of the best players in the world right now lads. So uh, I don't want any of this playing out from the back nonsense. We want to get stuck in. We want to let them know we're there. We want a firm, a rigid, <laughs> don't know about you guys, I like where this is going. 4-4-2 formation. Okay never mind, you lost me at that. Why is Kyle Walker even here? He's not even that good of a footballer. Can you imagine Virgil van Dijk hoofing route one balls up to Kylian Mbappe? Lionel Messi dashing hopeless crosses into the box. Sergio Ramos. Nah, never mind. He's a shit house anyway, so it won't make a difference. To be fair, I did hear that Kylian Mbappe was always a big Newcastle fan. Now oh, you know, we, we, I have always liked uh, Newcastle. Uh, <laughs> I need to stop this French accent. Well, uh, my inspirations were Alain, Ginola, and uh, Matty Longstaff. It's nice to see some high quality edits out there already. I'm sure the welcome to Newcastle skill montages won't be too far away. Meanwhile, Paul Pogba's keeping himself busy by nutmegging his own mum, putting balls in between mother's legs. That sounds more like Neymar though. OMG, Paul Gargantuan, your midfielder could never- Listen, I'm not gonna lie, this is the least clean nutmeg I think I've ever seen. I'm concerned, if I'm honest, at how much Paul struggled with this clear fraudulence on display. Tell you what, yeah, the hard-working English midfielder would have made a much better job of doing that. So Liverpool left-back Andy Robertson posted his lockdown routine on Twitter this week, starting with at 8am feeding the kids, at half-eight calling Trent, then doing yoga with the boys. There's a lot of iron brew mentioned 
mentioned in this schedule. He calls Trent quite a lot. In fact, he calls Trent more than he feeds his own kids, which is a bit of a concern. They're just the cutest couple, honestly. I really can't wait for the wedding. From one Scottish left back to another now, the official Rangers Twitter account asked to see their fans' favourite picks from themselves and their families at the Ibrox this week, to which Kieran Tierney replied with him and his Celtic teammates celebrating a victory at Rangers Stadium in an old firm derby. You know what it's time for. It's a Housery Award for Kieran Tierney. Romelu Lukaku sorted out a Q&A for his fans on Twitter. Unsurprisingly, he was asked to rate his first touch out of 10, to which he replied with, better than yours, that's for sure. It's a good response, but I do have to question it slightly. <laughs> Who am I kidding? There's platypuses with better first touches than him. I want to break free. Life seems to be pretty tough over at Aston Villa. Wait, so when's Pep Guardiola gonna stand up? Or is he not one of the former England midfielder Joe Cole was involved in like a Skype call or Zoom or I mean, other video services are available. He was being interviewed on BT Sport when suddenly he sort of transfers two eras at Chelsea from the, that when it was him and Hasselbank up front, then he dropped the into a midfield position. Oh, turn that light on. <laughs> Um, he's a fan. Sorry. <laughs> Why does he look like he lives in between the toilets at Weatherspoons? <laughs> in fairness, before I saw this clip, I was half expecting a kid to walk out from the background. Alfonso Davies has signed a new contract at Bayern Munich and they're practicing their social distancing relatively well. They didn't tell you this, but he actually had to hold his breath throughout the entire contract negotiations. Yeah, so Alfonso, how are you feeling? Uh, yeah, I, I feel fine, to be honest. No, I mean, how are you feeling? Are you feeling ill? No, I've just, I've literally just had a medical. Hey, listen, big man, one cough and you're out on loan. Now, I'll be honest, I don't know why Dennis Wise is giving halftime team talks to Indonesian under 17 footballers, but just take this clip in anyway. The left winger, he's taking piss out of you. Put him <coughs> in that fucking row over there. You have my permission to put them two fuckers over there. You fucking hit him. Just punch him. Just can hit him straight in the nose, man. I want to see him leaving here on live support. And if he does, I want to see you unplugging the live support. Realistically, I don't know why Dennis Wise is getting so irate here. Do these Indonesian footballers understand him? A couple of them seem a little vacant. I don't know whether there's a language barrier. Most of them seem about as confused as Neymar's family tree. Now, one of the best videos I have seen in a long time appeared on Twitter and on TikTok this week. And it's a group of mates recreating World Cup moments. Moments. Daily Blint. Van Persie with an early run. He's onside this time. It's 1 1. This is the incident. It's well, obviously said, weren't that? Obviously, Matarazzi said something. There it is. You can't excuse that. Nah, the fact they've sacrificed this poor little boy's head. They've given him the Zidane bolding spot. The dedication to the cause. Recreations are a theme this week. Someone's photoshopped iconic footballing moments, but without a crowd. We've got Eric Dyer about to scrap a non existent fan at White Hart Lane. Emmanuel Adebayor celebrating in front of of a non-existent away end and Eric Canton half like kicking a chair. But do you want an escape from how terrible life is right now? Well, why don't we take a look back down memory lane with FTW Rewind, taking a look at what was happening this week many, many years ago. On this day, just a year ago, Manchester City were knocked out of the Champions League by Tottenham in an absolute thriller of a tie, last minute VAR denying Raheem Sterling. For some reason, the City account tweeted a reminder for their own fans. Listen, it's not the one, lads. Delete it, I beg you. Back in 2013, then Liverpool striker Luis Suarez bit Branislav Ivanovic in a game against Chelsea. For just £3 a month, you can feed a hungry Uruguay. And back in the mid-thousands, David Cameron accidentally said that he supported West Ham instead of Aston Villa because they have the same colour kit. I guess it's the closest colour you can get to a pig in the world of football, so it makes sense. <laughs> If I'd have tried this, I would have genuinely broken 16 windows. With nothing left to do, football skillsters are teaching their own grandparents how to become freestylers. <laughs> 
seems to be working pretty well. Now, in the level below the Football League in England, so the National League, it's semi-professional for those that don't know, they decided to end the league at its current points. They're just cancelling the rest of the fixtures. And this is obviously because of Cajona, and they've just decided it'd be easier to sack off the rest of the season. But obviously, there is promotion and relegation in those leagues, and they're very important because they determine who's semi-pro and professional. Apparently, it's under careful consideration, but it would be a massive shame if the likes of Barrow don't get promoted to the Football League for potentially the first time in their whole history, I can't remember, if they just sack off the whole season. I think it's massively unfair. But it also raises the question as to whether it'll happen in the higher leagues, you know, the Championship, the Premier League. Let me know what you think will happen down in the comment section. <laughs> But now, though, it is time for Still Nil Nil, and you guys know the score by now. This is the segment where I bring you the best Sunday League and amateur football from the course of the week. And this time, we're going more with amateur. We're, we're back in Africa again, lads. What can I say? My people are just bringing out all the entertainment in these tough times. Now, I'm going to need you to all say a prayer for this defender, because what you're about to see is illegal. <laughs> Nah, listen, listen, this is not okay. I demand this man is put behind bars. Elsewhere, Odin Igalo was found out this week on Twitter for uh, following an interesting page, to say the least. We had potentially some of the best goalkeeping I've ever seen. Samir Nasri is on the verge of being sacked by his current club because he's gone to Dubai without actually telling his parent club, Andalect, where he is or what he's doing and hasn't spoke to anyone at the club since. I think he might well be busy, lads. And finally, over in Singapore, the government of all people have launched a new superhero called Must Always Walk Alone Man. Doesn't really flow off the tongue for a start. The purpose of this superhero is that he loves Manchester United and hates Liverpool and is there to to help fight coronavirus. If he doesn't like Liverpool, then why is he fighting it? Surely he'd just let it take away the Premier League. I don't understand. That's probably the least of the problems here. That though is going to wrap up football this week, and I hope you have enjoyed it. If you have, then slap a like on the video and subscribe if you're new to the channel. I apologise that my upload schedule has been tragic in the last week. I literally haven't recorded a video in like seven days. It's pretty shocking, but I feel more motivated and I'm back now. I just needed a bit of a break. So I apologise for that. I'll get better from now on. On top of that, you can also follow me on social media it is at the official fng on twitter and on insta but it's been a pleasure ranting at you guys today have a wonderful day enjoy yourselves and goodbye